When leveraging the different models found within OpenAI's API, there is a special use case called fine tuning. When we fine tune models, this allows us to take a base model like 3.5 or 4 and laser in the model even further so we get more consistent outputs that are more quality at scale. Currently, a lot of videos on this topic on YouTube is like six to eight months old. Therefore, let me give you the updated version with the new user interface, how we're going to do this. So in today's video, I plan on one, creating a file for this for a very specific use case, downloading it, uploading it, and showing how to use it in the context of opening as API. Welcome back, y'all. This is one of my more complex videos found on the channel. This is going to involve a little bit of code. So if you don't like that, you can click off. But if you do like that and you actually want to see how to fine tune OpenAI API models, this is the video for you. I'm going to show you one, how to create the file, which may be a little confusing. I'm also going to show you how to upload the file and start actually calling that endpoint in the context of code. This is my Twitter. Check it down below. I'll see you in the video. First things first, I'm going to go ahead and leave the fine tuning documentation in the description down below. So you can go ahead and click it and you can reference everything that I'm showing you in today's video. From these steps outlined here, though, all we need to do is prepare a training model. We need to upload it. Then it's going to train on their back end. We're going to value th evaluate the results in the playground. And then we can go ahead and start leveraging this new endpoint. Basically, when you call an endpoint in code, as you may or may not know, we will typically call it by using the model name. Therefore, for example, if I was doing an API call in VS Code, I would use GPT 3.5 Turbo-0125, and now I'm using that model. First question might be is, what is 0125? January 25th of 2024, you wanna use the most update, up-to-date models because past models, they deprecate. Let's go ahead in this video though, discover, I can jump over to here, how to create a file and fine tune a file. So if we scroll down here, it goes over common use cases why you would do this. This obviously improves reliability at producing a desired output. If the very specific reason you're calling that API, you're expecting a very specific type of output, e.g. it's not that creative, it's not that diverse in the outputs you're expecting, rather it's more structured in its outputs, using fine tuning may be the option for you as you want more consistency rather than holy smokes, it just made like a really cool paragraph about unicorns and butterflies and it's super creative. We don't want a creative. We don't want this creative. We want you to do a very specific task for us. So therefore, we're going to laser you in by fine tuning you. So if I scroll down here, let's go ahead and create a data set together. With this example data set here, we have the context that we are going to fine tune a model to make it sarcastic. So to be honest with you, I'm going to use the same data here, but we're going to add more points. I'm going to go ahead and leave this in the description down below. This is an example JSON file. I'm not going to use this one, but this is an example one you can upload just to see if it even works. Although I will point out this one actually isn't perfect as it doesn't give you 10 example inputs and outputs. That's the name of the game when it comes to fine tuning. You want to give an example input and the expected output. So the model understands how to basically communicate in the context of multiple prompts coming in past the initial training stage. Make this a little bit more clear. What's the capital of France? Sarcastic, right? Paris, as if everyone doesn't know that already. That's the idea here. Let's go ahead and create our training file. I'm in VS Code here. You can go ahead and install this application as well. It's completely free. We're gonna go ahead and create a new file for the training data here. So I'm gonna come up here to File, New File. I'm gonna simply name this file Test for Video. I'm gonna do dot JSON L. This is the type of format that they're looking for when uploading it. I'm gonna hit Enter here. I'm gonna save it. Once I have saved it, I'm gonna go ahead and delete this other one because we don't need it. Someone don't save this. And now we have the formatted file of how we want to proceed. I'm gonna go ahead and grab their example code. Example format, I'm gonna copy this, I'm gonna paste it. So let me explain this a little bit more so this makes sense to y'all. First thing I wanna point out is that right now there is three data points that it can reference in the context of when it's training the system as you'll see later in this video. In order for you to have a file that works within this you know, realm of fine tuning, we need to actually have 10 different data points or alternatively basically 10 different examples of how you want outputs to come out comparative to the input we put in. Explain this a little bit more. System, what are we? Typically, if you're familiar with API, this is where you would put the uh, default in here is like, I am a helpful assistant. Let's laser in a little bit more. We're gonna say the system itself is Marv, a actual factual chatbot that is also sarcastic. Come over here, user content. This is when you yourself is like talking to ChatGPT, you put in like a text input, such as what's the capital of France? That's your message this is the expected message coming in from the user and then the assistant and this output is the output from the actual model itself everything makes sense so far from here i need to simply add seven more examples so what i'm gonna do just to show you you can do command c enter command v command v and proceed in that manner 
So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cook this up real quick. We can actually do one together. Let's do one together. So number four, how far is the moon from Earth? I have no clue. So we'll try and say we are going to go ahead and I'm going to leave the system as the same. I'm going to go ahead and change this though. I'm going to say what is the capital or let's add apostrophe. What is the capital of Texas? And then this is basically where we give our sarcastic answer. So let's mess around a little bit. We'll say, Austin, have you never read a textbook? I guess that is a little sarcastic and that should be good. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and add six more data points and proceed. Because I'm lazy, I'm gonna go ahead and make this simple myself. I went ahead and just gave an example data point that I provided earlier. Talking to Chad GBT, I'm just like, you know, based off this, can we get six more examples? It wanted to output one by one, but like, no, 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 that's too much. So I'm like, can you output this all in one block? I can copy, I'll put it all as 10, but notice how it is structured a little bit differently than what we had originally in this code where they're doing different syntax. We wanna make sure it's the same syntax. So what I'm gonna do is say, okay, make sure each one is one line and is like this, enter again. I don't want the commas. I don't want these square brackets at the end. There we go. So we wanna make sure we do same syntax here. That's actually pretty important in this context. Also on top of that, ensure that there's no spacing. So for example, if I hit space, space here, and then I pasted the code, that's no good either. Make sure there's no spacing, as compressed as possible, and we should get our six examples here. I'm gonna hit copy, come back over here, hit paste. Now we got 10 example data points. This is the minimum that's required to train a model for OpenAI up to this point. Let's look at some of the examples. What's the tallest mountain in the world? Mount Everest, standing at tall as 8,848 meters. But don't worry, your backyard hill is still impressive, okay? When was the internet invented? The concept came about in the 1960s, but it's clear you've been ministering it since birth. Okay, now it's being a little bit nicer than expected. We got our data points. Now, how do we take this file and upload it? So I'm gonna make sure I delete everything so there's no empty space here below. 10 points, I'm gonna right click this. For me, I'm gonna simply put reveal and finder. All you're gonna do though is once it's revealed in your finder, you're gonna simply command C or control C and paste it to your desktop. Is there a more effective way to do this? Probably. This is how I'm doing it. Once you have the file though, let's jump over back to OpenAI. We are in OpenAI. We are in our fine tuning dashboard. And from here, we are going to make me jump over here. And I'm gonna say create. Base model, this is what this is the one you're gonna choose. In most contexts, you're probably gonna choose 3.50125. Right now, GPT-4 is not available for a lot of people. It's available for a select few people. And I'm not one of those people. <laughs> I'm gonna hit 3.5 here, 0125, the most up-to-date model. I'm gonna go ahead and upload the file we just created together. Once I have it selected, make sure you're using that JSON L. Very important. I'm gonna say upload selected. We don't have any of this. And then suffix we can add to our model name. This might actually be useful. We're gonna say uh, funny, funny bot. I'm gonna say upload selected. Perfect. And we're gonna go ahead and create. Now this is where it's validating the files. We'll get a little bit of a message board here. This is what it looks like when it's successful. You know, new fine tuned model created. Job has successfully completed. Notice I actually did get an error. It's good that I got this error so I can actually explain it to you. It said that example 11 is not a valid JSON format, but there's no example 11. Well, what happened was I did this. I showed you to delete it basically, but I didn't hit command save or I didn't save the file and then I ex exported it. So what I need to do is I need to make sure it's save here. I need to make sure that there is no little blue ticker there. Now this is the fresh file. I'm going to go ahead and do this process again and re-upload it. Funny bot two, upload, hit create. Also want to point out for that kind of error message, it's going to specify the exact line that isn't in the correct format. So that's helpful. For your reference, these are the lines, nine, eight, nine, 10, line eight, line six, line four. Now the actual validating process really depends. I've had one take me like 30 minutes, 40 minutes. This data is pretty small. This data is pretty short. Therefore, we should get a pretty fast success here. There we go. The fine tuning job has started. It has confirmed that the actual structure and formatting of the file is correct. Now the actual training that's happening right now does cost money. So for this one random example I did, it was around 87,000 training tokens and 10 epochs. If I come over to their documentation, this is where you estimate your cost. They gave an example of if there was 100,000 tokens trained and three epochs, it's around 240 USD. So keep that in mind to actually train a model with a data set, data set, it does cost money. Once the data set has been trained though, now if the data looks good and the outputs are consistent, you have a better model at scale when you access this new endpoint. Now the final objective here is once this is done training and I get the green light of succeeded, we're gonna come over to the playground here and we're gonna be able to actually play around with it and see if it does work. So I'm gonna ask a question that's general and see if the answer is sarcastic. 
Also, while this is loading, let me know in the comments down below if you fine-tuned models in the past and how you've used it and like why you've used it. I think this will be very helpful to give more perspective for people that are interested in fine-tuning, but more likely like give me good examples of it, right? I can think of a couple, although those might be a little bit confidential. But the point being is that there is power here in the sense that you don't have to maybe prompt it as much for your initial input data when you call these endpoints comparative to calling it at a more general level, if I were to call just GBT 3.5 Turbo 0125. That sounded like a robot. That sounded like something from a movie, but that's what they call them. Once a model is completely done with training, you can actually reference it exactly like this. Traditionally, we would have referenced it like, you know, GBT 3.50125 here, but now we can actually reference our fine tuned model in our code. Super powerful. That was the point of the suffix so we can identify more specifically what is incurring and what like fine tune happened. So for example, if I were to take this model and use it in code, I would copy this entire string and then simply put it into my call on OpenAI's API. There we go. Once we complete the training, we'll say the job has successfully completed, we'll get succeeded, and we can start messing with it in Playground. I'm gonna hit Playground here. We're gonna come to Playground here. We're gonna go ahead and be able to choose our model. Scroll down here, we should see, yeah, fine two models, the suffix of funny bot. What I've realized though, through training and through processing of this, is that it will default to your helpful assistant in the context of Playground, not in the context of API calling, Therefore, I'm going to add the system that we already added throughout the code, which is Marviewer, a factual chatbot that is also sarcastic. Let's say, what is the capital of Hawaii? There we go, y'all. This is how we start leveraging fine-tuned models in the context of OpenAI. Now, I would suggest only to use this if you really need to make sure, basically try the traditional way of prompting, which I go over in this video right here. If that doesn't work and you are still facing issues, try JSON or JavaScript. Try that, you know, format the outputs. And if that doesn't work, use fine tuning. I'm gonna leave a playlist at the end here going over building a software from start to finish, everything you should know. I'll see you in the next video. There we go. We learned how to fine tune in the new UI OpenAI has provided. Leave a like, it's completely free. That's the playlist I was referring to. That's a random video. That's my face. We do a ton of stuff on this channel. Check me out. I'll see you in the next video.